Okay, this is the notes for section 5.1, Inequalities in Compound Sentences. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you read uh, section 5.1 before continuing with this video. In section 5.1, we're looking at um, doing inequalities with one variable. Uh, then the first thing we need to look at is the idea of what a compound sentence is. And that, that actually, that idea is going to kind of continue out throughout the entire chapter. But a compound sentence is a mathematical sentence in which two clauses are joined, joined with and or by the word or. Okay. So the two clauses always have either an and or an or between them. Now sometimes that can be implied based on the way it's written and we'll kind of talk about that just here in just a little bit. Okay. Okay, let's begin by looking at uh, compound sentences with, that are connected with the word and. We call these intersections of sets. We write it like this, A intersect B. Um, and when we look at the solution set of that, it's, it's, it contains the items that are both a member of set A and a member of set B. Okay. So in order to be a member of the intersection, you have to be a member of both of the sets that are connected with the AND. Okay. So let's just take a look at some basic examples here in involving 8 and 4 and then how X relates to them. So the first one, if X is greater than 8 and X is greater than 4. Okay. So we're looking for numbers that are both greater than 8 and greater than 4. Well, every number that's greater than 8 is also greater than 4, so that solution set would be this right here. Um, if I look at part B here, x is less than 8 and x is less than 4. Well, every number that's less than 4 is also less than 8, so this would be the solution set for that one. Part C, there is no solution because there's no number that is both greater than 8 and less than 4. Therefore, there's no solution for that. And then part D, x is less than 8 and x is greater than 4. Most times when we have something like that, um, that's we use and quite a bit on this type of situation. And you'll notice that it includes the values between 4 and 8. Now, a lot of times when we see that, we're going to write it in a little different way. We're going to write it like this. 4 is less than x, and x is less than 8. And what's nice about that is if we put the small number on the left and the big number on the right, we can see that x represents the values that are between those two numbers. Okay? So let's look at example one here. It says graph x such that it, negative 4 is less than x is less than 1. Okay, so we're looking for, if, if we have it written like that, okay, we'll, we're looking for all the values between negative 4 and 1, because those would satisfy both those inequalities. So when I graph that, negative 4 and 1 are the two values that I'm most interested in. It's less than in both cases, so I'm going to have open circles, and then I'm going to shade in this stuff between those open circles. <laughs> Okay, one of the things that we have to do when we're dealing with compound sentences is kind of be able to take the words from English and translate those to, to mathematical clauses. So if I have something like x is from 3 to 4 or x is between 3 and 4, we have to know what those differences mean. Well, when I use the word from, what it means is that it includes both 3 and 4 and everything in between it. Okay. However, when I use the word between, then it means that it's everything between 3 and 4, but does not include 3 and 4. Okay. So when between is used, the endpoints are not included. And when from is used, the endpoints are included. Okay, let's look at the word or as it joins to uh, mathematical clauses in a compound sentence. When we have the word or, we have the union between two sets. So uh, generally we're going to write that as the union of A and B like this. Okay, And when we talk about a union of two sets, what we're talking about is um, 
anything that's in either one of the sets would be a member of the solution of the compound sentence. Okay, so if it satisfies one of the mathematical clauses, it would be considered part of the, the solution set. So if you look at A through D down here, if it's greater than 8 or greater than 4, well, every number that would be greater than 4 then would represent that solution set because all the numbers that are greater than 8 are also part of that solution set. Okay, and then part B is kind of just the reverse of that. Every number that's less than eight or less than four. Well, have every number less than four is also less than eight. Therefore, my solution set would just be this right here. Okay, so on these, we could simplify them and just write them as one statement. Okay, part C um, is kind of a lot of how we see the word or used and that's when we have two sets of numbers that are going in kind of different directions so x is greater than 8 or x is less than 4 so these would represent the numbers the only thing that wouldn't be represented is the values between there okay and then the last set part D uh, x is less than 8 or x is greater than 4. Well, if you think about all the numbers that are less than 8 start here and go in this direction. All the numbers that are greater than 4 start here and go in this direction. So that would represent every single number so we could shade in the entire number line including the arrows. <laughs>